Hi, this is Barry from Knitting for Love, and here's another video for you. Um, I did this video a couple of times over trying to get my sound correct, and, and just want to make sure that um, you guys can hear me, because in some of my other comments on some of my videos, my voice is very soft-spoken, so basically I needed to uh, get a better mic that would pick up the sound of my voice better, um, so you can hear me. So, um, this what you see here is an actual sweater that I have finished. I just got to weave in some edges. This is the bottom of the sweater. It's very lacy. It's very holy, very stretchy, very forgiving. So, and it's very multicolored. It's an oversized sweater. This sweater will be, it's actually a finished sweater. So there's the sleeves. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do this stitch right here. And it's it's a beginner can do this stitch um, and it doesn't take much to do all you have to know is how to knit yarn over and knit two together and purl that's it that's all you need to know and those are beginner stitches so let's get started so I've got a little needles here and I've got some yarn so I'm going to cast on about 10 stitches or 12 stitches and I'm going to knit about four rows on both sides to give you the garter stitch which is the ribbing and it's not a very tight ribbon because this is an oversized sweater so I wanted it to fall nicely I just wanted to drape so I don't have much of a rim so but that's my preference um, for this particular sweater. So I will return once I've cast it on 12 and knitted about three or four rows. And I will return. Okay, I have returned and I've actually cast it on 14 stitches. And uh, the reason being is this pattern is a four row repeat and I like to have some kind of border to sew things together with so I leave two stitches in the front and two stitches on each end um, just to give me something to work as an edging uh, for the sweater. I'll show you the edge of the sweater in a second. Let me show you this. It is You can hardly see my seam but you don't see a bunch of rows of straight knit because I use that to actually sew the sweater up with. So you actually have holes going, connecting from one side to the other. Um, so yeah, so that's why I cast on two, 14, excuse me, cast on 14 stitches, leaving two on each end, uh, just as a, as a pattern holder an edge to give me something to sew with. So, four row repeat. Row one, you're going to knit two together. I'm not sorry, knit two together. You're going to knit the first two. Wow, I'm tongue tied today with these. So I'm going to knit the first two and then I'm going to yarn over, knit the next two together. And I'm going to repeat that across the row, yarn over again, knit two together. So basically I am creating a hole and taking and decreasing. So I'm increasing and decreasing. So this is an increase, yarn over, and knitting two together is a decrease. So I'm going to keep going, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and make sure that your row previous to this is a little loose because it does get a little difficult. Once you get started with the pattern, everything is fine. I'm at the last two stitches, so I'm going to knit two. And I still should have my 
14 stitches on my needle. If you've worked that row correctly, you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you should always have your 14 stitches. If you have 15 stitches, it means you've created one too many yarn overs and not enough decreases. And if you have 13 stitches, it means you've done too many decreases and not enough yarn overs. So row two, so we're gonna per, we're gonna knit the first two. And then we're gonna purl all the way across. So we're gonna bring our yarn into the purl position and we're going to purl all the way across to the last two stitches. So we're always leaving those first and last sti two stitches to work differently. So only the body of the item we're working on has got the true pattern. Okay, and we're at the last two stitches. Bring my yarn forward back into the knit position and we're gonna knit the last two. Now, <clears throat> We're on row three. So as you can tell, we're actually formed a few holes. So row three, different from row one, we're going to knit this, the first two, always. Now, if you can see, row one, we had a hole, we created that hole, and we have one little line here. We actually need two lines here. So we're not going to knit, uh, uh, we're not gonna create a yarn over like we did here before. What we're gonna do now, row three, is we're going to knit the, f the, neck, the first two together and then yarn over behind it. And then we're gonna do knit two together. Yarn over behind it. So we're just doing the opposite of what we did in row one, is yarn overing after the decrease instead of before it. Now we're at the last two, and this is where most people might get a little confused. You still need to yarn over because we yarned over after the first knit two. So if you ever get lost in your rows, look back, see your first two stitches. If this looks like a knit stitch, it means you knitted two together and then you yarned over. And in that case, you're gonna make sure you yarn over here. So just in case you forget your rows. So then you're going to knit one and knit two. This is a little difficult still on the camera to do looking at the camera because I'm not used to looking at myself and I'm tangled up here. <laughs> Almost making a mess of things. There. I've got an extra long tail. So this is the fourth row. Again, we're going to knit the first two. And we're going to bring our yarn into purl position and purl until we reach the last two. We're at the last two, bring the yarn forward to the knit position and knit the last two. And turn our work. Now you see it's starting to form. And we can knit another row, knit another set, so you can see. So the first two stitches again, we're gonna knit the first two. And 
and now what's to look for is you see if I spread this apart there's no yarn over the hole is all the way down here and then there's a hole um, next across from it that means you're going to yarn over here so if you ever forget what row you're on just look at your first set of stitches if this looks solid to you like there's one and two stitches two sets of braids in between the stitches then that means you have to yarn over first so this is a yarn over and then knit two together and then you keep repeating the pattern all the way across the row And we're at our last two. And I have a knot in my yarn. That's weird. Then we're going to knit the last two. And we're going to turn. And the even rows, you're always going to purl. So you're going to knit the first two. And try to knit the, the, the purl wise, try to purl loose. That way knitting two together on the other side won't be as difficult for you. Ooh. So we're going to purl across until we get to the last two. So we're on row two. Bring the yarn forward, knit the last two. Turn our work. As you can see, it's starting to form. I happen to like this pattern with a variegated yarn. It makes the, it look really, really nice when it's not a solid color. I'm not very much of a pink individual, but I like my sweater. And this is row three. So I'm going to knit the first two. Again, if you don't know where you left off, if you look, you see a hole. Only one bar going across that's twisted here. That means you're going to have to knit two together. So you're going to knit two together. Yarn over. And then you're going to repeat this all the way to the end until you get to the last two stitches. I'm at the last two stitches. And I have to make my yarn over and then knit two together. I mean, sorry, knit the last two stitches <laughs> okay and this is the reverse side it looks just as good um, as the knit side so either way have something reversible if you like um, and this is the final row row four let's knit the first two bring into the purl position and purl across to the last two. I'm at the last two, bring the yarn to knit position, 
knit the last two. So this is actually a great pattern for a nice lacy scarf, anything lacy that you might think of. So there you have it. And that's, and it's very f flexible, very giving in both directions, very stretchy pattern. So it's got a lot of give to it. So I hope you like this. Hope you make something out of it. Um, leave a comment below, like, subscribe. Let me know what you've done with this. I, I had a, another person uh, on a previous video tell me they made uh, cuffs on sweaters just from a sample of what I've done here. And she says she absolutely loves her sweater now. It changed the look of her sweater completely. So that's great. Uh, I like to hear stuff like that, more comments like that. And again, happy knitting. Have fun. Bye.